Welcome to the demo session from LearnDataModeling.com. In this demo session, I'll be explaining what data modeling development lifecycle is. In this presentation document, you see a number of information and the important data modeling deliverables are conceptual data model, logical data model, physical data model, creating lookup scripts, creating DDL scripts, creating metadata reports, testing, maintenance of the data model, and again, doing the versioning of the data model. These are the important deliverables of a data model. Now, I'll explain about conceptual data model and how a conceptual data model has to be created. Before a conceptual data model is created, understanding the business requirements is the key to the data model. A business requirement may come from various sources like data files, business rules, and as well as forms. When I say data files, that may be from Oracle database, or it may be from SQL Server database, or from PeopleSoft database. So it may be from ERP-based systems, or EAM-based systems, or database management systems, you don't know anything about those files. But as a data modeler, you'll pretty much understand those files, and you'll be able to create data models from these data files. The second was the business rules. You may not have a data file, you may not have a form, but the business people, there is a business analyst and subject matter experts, they know how to create business rules based upon the business requirements. They will try to project every business rule in a document in the same way they hand over to a data modeler. So after understanding the business rules, you need to get more information on BAs and SMEs. You don't understand those concept topics and try to expand your knowledge in those areas and finally you create a data model. When you say farms, a lot of government farms are there. For example, if you go and open Social security number, then a form is provided. When you want to take a mortgage loan, another form is provided. When you go to a bank, some other form is provided. When you want to take a driver license, some other form is provided. So different types of forms are there. And as a data model, you need to create a data model from these forms. Broadly classifying a data model can be classified into two types logical and as well as physical data model. Now, depending upon the usage, you have OLTP data model and as well as dimensional data models. So we design OLTP data models for RDMS databases and we design dimensional data model for data warehouse and data marts. Now, whenever you get these different sources, what you have to understand, how to create an entity. After identifying the important entities, how to add it, attribute to the entity, which entity should be master entity and a child entity, what are the different keys present here, how to join entities, what is the relationship existing between those entities, and are they identifying or non identifying, what is optional and cardinality, then how to maintain the lookup data how to create constraints. Apart from the entities and apart from the attributes, what type of additional attributes you need to create. These are all different levels of the data modeler. And then only you'll be able to create a data model based upon the current requirements and future requirements also. Your business rule may something may say something about the current business environment. But as a data model, you have to think about the future also. Lots of ifs and buts questions. What happens if this condition is going to arrive tomorrow? So what is the solution for that one? You have to think in all possible ways. Then after understanding the business requirement, you start creating the conceptual data model. As I told you earlier, this logical data model and physical data model are the two types of the data model. And conceptual data model is the first step in creating the data model. 
now in a top down approach that means understanding the business requirements and the maintaining the data model this is a top down approach where you create concept of data models logical data models physical data models ddl scripts creating lookup scripts and maintaining the data model this is a top down approach in this top down approach a conceptual data model is the first step in constructing a data model it clearly gives you the visual representation of the business what does it mean here then you buy a plot you plan to construct a home when you construct a home you have some kind of thinking for the living room for the kitchen for the washroom you got some dimensions within your mind so you go to a planner and the plan is going to give a neat sketch about the different dimensions present for living room or bedroom or small bedrooms whatever it is so without seeing the house you are able to visualize how your house will look like similarly a data model role is very important because he has to design the database when data is stored in the database no one knows how the data is stored in the database it may be normalized form or it may be denormalized form or it will not have any pattern all kind of wrong things will be included in the database so as a data model what you do you design the plan for the database you decide how the objects are going to be stored in the database how the data is going to be stored in the database in that situation the first step is to create a conceptual data model this conceptual data model provides only high level information that means when we are talking about a hospital or a clinic it only describes about doctors clinic patient what is the fee collected for each patient what is medicine given for each patient it talks about only major thing it will not go deep or dig into deep to get more information whenever someone sees a concept data model they will understand that this is what is about the concept of data model for example if you talk about the mortgage business then what are the main important components there a borrower is a main component then co borrower then what kind of assets are there what kind of liabilities are there so that is what you need to understand these are part as the major things like this we need to talk about the staffing data model so what are the major entities a company candidate requirement closure these are the main entities in staffing data model we need to talk about training institute which one is the main entity student course trainer these are the main entities so we discuss only about the main entities in the concept of data model and how these entities are connected with each other you may have n number of lookups with student or course or you may have n number of lookups with borrower with liability and with assets we are not worried about the n number of lookups but what we are interested here is only the entities that play a major role so we understand the business of that particular entity we design something based upon that entity you would like to know what kind of attributes will be best suitable for this entity in a logical data model so we are not worried about those things in the concept of data model all you need to know is how the entities are grouped and what kind of relationship exists between those entities then you start preparing the main subject area what is the main subject area So when you talk about a bank, there are different lines of business. Credit card is one subject area. Debit card it is another subject area. Savings account there is another subject area. When all subject areas objects are put into one subject area, that is called as main subject area. Main subject area comprises of all entities that are present in the different subject areas. So you design what is main subject area. Then you design what is A subject area, subsets of the main subject area, and you design accordingly. Then the concept of data model 
comprise of only entitative and relationships and the relationships within the symbolic notation. When I say symbolic notation, there are different methods followed with each company. For example, IE, information engineering. This is the notation is used worldwide. IDE phonics, that is another type of notation which is used in some military organizations. In books also, you can see that IDE phonics in IDE. But what you need to understand is the symbolic notation is very, very important because the cardinality, the optionality, all depends upon your symbolic notations. Then, a conceptual data model may have 100 entities because it describes the business that is present. It's not mandatory that all the entities that are present in the conceptual data model should be in the logical data model or it should be in the physical data model and the same entities should be implemented in the database also. Whatever is required, that is picked in the physical data model and it is finally implemented in the database. In a conceptual data model discussion, technical and as well as non-technical teams participate in the decision and they take some kind of good decisions in a conceptual data model. So how conceptual data model discussion is done? Whiteboards are there. People draw something on the whiteboards. They take a conclusion on the different entities or relationships. Or they used to draw it on white paper also uh, about the relationships and entities. So whatever is this, they take it. So conceptual data model is the starting point of the data model development lifecycle. And then from there, it is approved by the stakeholders. Then the logical data model is created. Again, the logical data model is approved. Then the physical data models are created. Physical data models are signed up by the DBS and as well as other teams. Then it goes to creation of the database. All objects which are in the physical data model that is implemented in the database. Finally, you also, as a data modeler, do the comparison between the data model and as well as the database. So this is the entire data modeling development life cycle. And in this demo session, I have given only high level overview about conceptual data modeling. So if you're interested to learn more, kindly reach us at learndatamodeling.com. Thanks for now.